The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Tuesday, the 5th of November. I'm not going to say what day it is other than 5th of November, Tuesday. Look at this. The Dow is up 260. It doesn't, it sounds like a lot, but look, it's only in this little cluster formation. But the one thing that was really impressive to me, and one of the reasons why I said to subscribers, we're not going short yet, we're not going, we're having patience. If I had identified correctly right here, that peak E at 43,325 on the 16th of October, together with the, the S&P, which I did call a peak D at 58.78.46 on that se on that session, um, then if we had a short position, certainly in the Dow, because we are still, we are three times long. Uh, we've got other positions, of course, as well, but we are still long the Dow. I didn't want to confuse things because I, it just seemed to me that there was residual strength and it was the daily chart that was really important in terms of having a consolidation. Those, look at this weekly chart. G slash C in the in the S and P, uh, just a little bit off. Fifty eight seventy eight was the all time high, and here we are at fifty seven fifty seven. Uh, it's a really, it, I wouldn't say it's an eye blink, but it's really close to an all time high. The Dow uh, is much further away. The Dow is down from forty three thousand three twenty five yesterday. Went to the forty one thousand six hundreds, um, and then I had. And one of the reasons why I anticipate that there should be some good support today is let me just go to this chart right here. Well, it's not a chart, it's a series of charts right here. These three make up my daily call. Every day I send out to subscribers what I'm looking at. And look at that 41,607.38 automated Chapman Wave support level. And that worked just beautifully. And now we're having a very strong move to the upside. And most of, actually, let me just do this for the moment. I, I'd shown this chart before. I just have a lot of these charts. One day I'll just click all these different charts. I'll spend the whole session. Maybe Technical Friday I'll do that. Um, look, here's the Dow. Had a beautiful up move right up until a few days ago. And then there's a big red candle. Smallish red candles in the S&P. Uh, a green candle today so far, days young. Uh, the uh, The... Uh, NDX 100 uh, goes red, green, red, green. It's all just a high-level consolidation, not much to see. Much weaker in the SMHs. Uh, SMH is up 3.51 today, 247.78. And the IWM, although it was weaker, it's been holding very well. It's up $1.53 right now, 221.60. So I like to keep this just to say to myself, I see it every time, every day when I'm about to do my daily newsletter. At the end of the day, at 4 o'clock, I'm already starting to do my overview, what I'm looking for, the next session, etc. cetera. Um, and what I, what I can't help seeing is this chart right with the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, indices and this chart right here, which has the uh, Chapman Wave trend gauge. Well, what it's not Chapman Wave trend gauge, it's Richard Arms um, short term trading index. See what today has. Uh, today has a low of 57, so they're still not in the category where I call it very low, meaning the Dow should open down the next day. So there's no signal yet over here. There have been actually very few signals in this index for a little while because the market has been so strong you know, directionally. All right, let's just get back to our story. So this is what I wanted to show you. And it's fascinating because I'm going to open this up. This is the monthly chart. I'm going to show you this chart right here. So I'm going to squeeze it so that it's, it takes in a lot more time. So here we've got Bush 2. Look how the market went up from, well, when did it come in? So that's four years. Let's go back five, right there. So look, that was a very weak um, 
Dow or S&P market, went to 1576 and then plunged to 666. And that was during the Bush, uh, final Bush period. Then comes Obama. Look at the market. Moves up from 666 to right there. I meant to put the type in what it was. But let's just go to monthly charts. It goes to January and it goes to 2300, 23, right? Not bad, 666 to 2300. Wait a minute. Then comes Trump. And Trump goes from that 2300 level all the way to a high of 2940 as a sharp pullback to 20, uh, 2491. And then gets to about the 339 area as he's handing over. So another bull market. Then comes Biden. Biden takes over over there. And look where we are going into January. Well, we can't talk about January. Uh, we can put this, put the uh, dashed line in. But um, isn't that interesting? So far, we've had one, two, three um, presidencies. One had a, a two-term a two -term period. Other one had a one. The other one had a one. I mean, it's still Biden. Even if even if Democrats take over, it's still that Biden himself had a one-term presidency. And each one's been a bullish, very bullish period. So on just visuals alone, I'm looking at this and saying somewhere in 2025, there should be another one of those pretty deep pullbacks. But at this exact moment, yeah, we are up 41 at 57.54. <laughs> this is very nice action. Okay, so on that basis alone, all I can say is I don't have any signals right now that are suggest mm, that was a mistake that are suggesting that there's a big crash coming. Now, if there's absolute chaos after this come next week, obviously that's going to be detrimental to the market. But just looking at price alone. Only reason why we didn't get aggressively long over the last few days, even though I was anticipating a short-term pullback with a chance that we can then go to a leg D in the weekly chart of the S&P and maybe extend in the monthly chart, extend that up. So, so far, it's real simple. At uh, 57.56, in the next week, if there is a close below this well, first of all, if there's a close below the, the low of the 20th of September, which is 56.74, I, I think that's just too close. I have to say that if there's a close under this particular candle right here, this inverted Chapman Wave Roman candle, the candle of the 18th of September of 56.15, let's just make it a round number. If there is a close under 5,600 between now and a week from Friday, that's a big problem. Okay, let's make it as simple as that. Now let's go back to our story. QQQ, NDX 100. Um, it went, it's been green, the nine period moving average. It went pink for a day. And there's a chance, there's a chance that today there's a strong close. It goes back to green, but you do have a sell signal in the QQQ. You have a sell signal in the S&P on the daily chart. Uh, we have to wait for the end of the day to see if it's a sell mode. And the daily chart of the Dow is in a sell mode. The very interesting thing is that the IWM is in a sell signal, but it's holding really well. That's dailies. All the weeklies are terrific. I'll be back in a moment. Dow, Dow's up 269. S&P is up 43. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician's Hour. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer. The opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, we're back. So let's just get back to the nitty gritties. So within the context of chart patterns, and that's what I'm about here, if you look at the high doubles, making higher highs and higher lows, this uh, two, really it's a three week because this week is still ongoing. So it's a three week period since we made it peak C2, meaning peak C1 was a two, uh, 228, was that 228 high? Yeah, the 228.63 high and peak C2, meaning it acted like a D, but it didn't make that D, was a 227.17. And yet it's still walking. Look, it's using the 14 period moving average as a springboard, walking the nine period moving average. Nice action. MACD did go negative. This is a weekly chart of the IWM. Stochastic's now gone under 80%. And the on balance volume is a little bit overbought, but still pretty good. And I'm saying that. It's a work in progress because the weekly chart is still positive. The monthly chart is still positive. <clears throat> Even that, too, has made a peak C1 and maybe a peak C2. We don't know about this month. It's got a whole month to go. So it's a work in progress. And it's really important that the small caps, the iShares Russell 2000 ETF, participate just as I've been talking about the XLF uh, relationship between the XLF which has gone to all-time highs over the last uh, few weeks. It went to the 47s, trading right now at 46.52. Uh, Peak E in the weekly chart, leg D in the monthly chart, and the KRE, which is uh, going to have a bit of a pullback from a peak D. Uh, whoops, let me get rid of this. I must have typed it in by mistake. There it is. So the relationship of the SM. S&P to the IWM, the S&P 500 to the, to the Russell um, 2000 small caps, is in a sense the relationship that I've been looking at between the S&P regional banking ETF, that has the, the, the larger banks, well, I, you know, it also includes Berkshire Hathaway, so it's really not a pure, but it's as close as you can get, money center banks, uh, JP Morgan, et cetera. Well, what I'm looking at here is that relationship to the small, the regional, S&P regional banking ETF, and we say small, but in America, small can still be <laughs> as big as some countries, let alone, uh, um, you know, these are the, the regionals. Um, anyway, we made a leg D in the weekly chart in this rectangle going from a higher high to higher lows. 
trying to get to the left side high of importance, and that's the 65, 50, 65 32 high uh, back on the February of 2023. That's a lot to go. I, yeah, it was 65, hit seven points. I don't know what we do to get this. I think it's going to take another couple of months, maybe. For us to get, you have to have to get to the Chamber Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone in the daily chart. But it's really important that you see participation. And look, the nine period moving average is way above the 14 in the weekly chart. It's got this rising uh, wedge formation. It says there should be an attempt at least if it doesn't take out 56 support and it's at 58. I see 84 right now. If it doesn't take that out, it should try to get to the top part of it. So if it, for me, if it wasn't a little minor thing that we've got an election coming up, I'd just be looking at the charts and saying, you know, I'm going to ignore all the news. I'm just looking at the charts. If certain base level of support in each stock or sector is taken out, I have to then look at it askance and say, whoa, that's, that's serious. It's changing the direction of the tide. So far, we haven't done that. I want to do also, I had a question, so I'll do this real quickly. So the gold, gold is gone. Um, it's up just a little bit at 27.46 right now. It looks like it's got the pattern that says big move up, big red candle. And then without making an immediate inside uh, bar and running to the top of the bar, it stays at the bottom of the bar. That's, look, we've seen, I'm only talking chart pattern now. This is the gold chart pattern that says that the top that we made at around about 27.98 matches, look, here we go. This is the SMHs. You see that big move up and then it comes down and then it can't really get out of its own way. It's dreaded, successful dreaded H, goes to a low case M and then takes it out. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, we're going to see soon enough whether or not gold is able to hold this up move, technically, um, the 9 is over the 14. Everything is still good in the daily. Weekly is very strong. Monthly is very strong. In leg C, it should still go to in the Chaffee methodology. It should still go to a D. Silver is holding. Uh, it's up 21 cents today, but it has come down and made lower lows and lower highs after that uh, failed cup formation. Uh, and that 9 period moving average is very close to turning negative, and it's got an F slash C in the weekly chart after a cup and, and a kind of a handle there. And I don't like that pattern because it says you come back into the handle, which it's doing. So silver was very strong. Now I think it's not quite as strong as it was. High-grade copper had a fabulous move yesterday, um, a nice move today. It's up 0.03 at 4.46. Let's say we were talking about SECO, which is Southern Copper. No, not going anywhere. Let's look at FCX, which is Freeport McMorrow. FCX. Well, not, not going anywhere. It's not following the, the copper chart itself. So, okay, i got to look at that and say, a uh, little divergence. It's like gold. It's like the GDX. I want to see the GDX leading, not failing. And right now, it's right on key support. <clears throat> major, major support. Chapman Wave inside track. Uh, propellant zone, which will become a repellent zone if we get to the 39s. And right now, you're at 40.02. So I'm watching it very closely. <clears throat> Our gold stock that we had just barely held on to the stop that we had. Uh, I, I don't know. The gold stocks are not doing, participating as well as they should. So that's GDX. I uh, had another. Oh, of course. We want to go to BT, BTC. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is up 2,295. <clears throat> yep. That looks looks like it's going to try for a leg D. Uh, I spoke about this cup and handle pattern that if you're getting in, you've got to get in way below the left side lip. And, and that's kind of what we've done for the subscribers to the opening call. Um, so what's really important about this is that it's saying that the whole idea of this rotation through the gold sector and the uh, Bitcoin sector for folks who are in Robin Hood seems to be still active. Look at that nice bounce that Robin Hood had an ugly session. Went to 28.58, a peak F top, um, and then... We were anticipating a pullback. This is a little deeper than I anticipated. That's okay. Uh, we're fine with that. Uh, we're along from the 16s, and we want to add. We'll add at some point very soon. Um, 
let's just watch this very closely because it's a very good sign that it's bouncing like this today, 2509. To me, it kind of represents, it's not as factual as it should be. It's more, uh, uh, how should I say it, empirical in a sense. Uh, it's just what I've been witnessing, but I don't know if that's the actual fact. You really have to know from the Robin Hood people whether that's the case. But that looks to me like a lot of the public are involved. So let's just go to the next thing that I want to look at here. So I wrote down uh, some of the questions that I ha had. <clears throat> oh, the question I, I got uh, from a number of people in the palette here. In the week, the month, the eggs. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the fund involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
Let me just quickly do the FXI and then I'm going to go to uh, Boeing. FXI right now is trading at uh, 32.47, up 59 cents. And I made a peak D in the weekly. There's that same pattern. We've seen it over and over again. Others. It's just fascinating to me. It's as if the market has certain templates and it throws the template out as a kind of a kind of a hint and that hint becomes a little bit more it has more emphasis to it and all of a sudden it doesn't matter what area it is sector if the pattern appears look for that pattern everywhere and there it is the doji candle peak d in the we in the daily chart comes down big move down instead of making a v-shaped pattern straight away or the rectangle that goes to a lopsided v or lopsided cup formation gravy cup and goes to high highs and higher lows instead starts to make a dreaded h and then takes out the low so this is a very interesting thing because the fxi says i'm i'm taking time a time out the technicals in the weekly chart are still very strong the 200 period moving average is at 31.17 and the price is at 32.45 right now uh, yep we can call it a gray a right there another a right there that becomes a B and that becomes a C and it's all within this rectangle that becomes the lowercase H becomes a lowercase M. It's a sideways move. I'll see if that's going to be going higher uh, very, very shortly because if it goes to 33.85 and then starts to touch the 34 area, that becomes positive and it starts to fill in the gap. If it takes out, I would put it this way, if it takes out uh, 30 as key support, that's a very negative sign. And right now it's in between. It's just di but digesting gain. So that's the uh, iShares China Rush large cap ETF. Let's go to the BA. BA is Boeing. Uh, it's down $1.12 at 153.96. Had a pop to the 157.66 level. Now, this is interesting. I've been looking at this for a long time, saying to myself, and I, I've looked at it for years because I have a, had a neighbor <clears throat> who bought the bonds, way, I mean, I'm talking about years ago, just um, either before or after the, the, those terrible crashes. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, let's just follow Boeing. After all, it was a fantastic, it used to be one of the great American companies, and then they just did everything wrong. They went for, you know, like General Motors one of, was one of the great American companies until the accountants started having plastic parts in the engines because they were cost-cutting. And then the Japanese with Toyota and Honda in the 80s just came with incredible machines. Uh, just the, the precision uh, cars lasted forever. And General Motors just, I mean, they deserve to fail, and they did. So this is a new General Motors. General Motors now is looking a lot better. But in the meantime, Boeing, and I, I, I'm not going to go into now, I have a, a grudge uh, because I think that the unions, the union bosses, not the unions, but the union bosses are kind of responsible. They should say, if you're not doing the work properly, we are going to pay for it at some time. My, my people, my union people are going to pay for it. Anyway, they didn't. So this is Boeing. So Boeing, right now, uh, the question came in, uh, can you give Boeing a quick overview on a daily, weekly, monthly, now that the strike is over and a new CEO is there? Maybe a great time to buy. So, you know, it's down a dollar forty-four. I think that the problems that they have have been serious enough to say, I want to see the price reflect the improvement. So... Yes, at 153 right now, and, oh, and what I wanted to mention is on the 14th of October, that shop moved down, then had a day before had a nice green can, big green candle, then it did a lower low. But that lower low is at 148 open, round number open, went to a 146.02 low, and then had a decent, a decent close. And then we rallied all the way to the 163 level, almost 164, plunged down to the 147s. And now, after hitting 157.56 or 66, you're down at the 153.62 level. So what I'm going to say to you is, <clears throat> and, I, and now I remember, I, I heard this briefly in Tommy's show. Uh, Tommy had a really great show uh, at 9 o'clock in the morning, of course, if you don't know, morning market kickoff. Has some really good points. Just like, likes to put the technicals and the the fundamentals together. And I, he was kind of doing that in a way with Boeing. 
Um, my only problem here is that the price of Boeing is suggesting that to turn the corner on a price basis in the chart, I would have to see the daily chart start to trade, trade above 156, probably 166, and at least start to trade there for weeks on end, turning the 160 level into support. And the line period moving average in the weekly chart finally go back to green. It hasn't been green since way back in 20, uh, this year, around about uh, March, where it was at the 200 moving average, period moving average and broke down. So this is what I would suggest, two things. One is, um, I don't think you play with options. If you had options, I would just see the easiest thing right now is to get either an out the money, not very far, but maybe 160 out the money call, and just move it out. I mean, move it towards December or something like that. Uh, that's one way to do it. The other is just start a small position here at 157, 153, I'm sorry, 153. I wouldn't get carried away. I just like, I'd put my foot in the door and say, okay, show me. I'm, I'm prepared to give you a chance, but show me. Because if you take out 146 on a closing basis, anytime in November, you're not ready for prime time. But if you take out 166, certainly 164.50 is the start, but 166, that says there's a chance that you've now made a U-shaped pattern or a bull-shaped pattern in the weekly chart that's going to improve. And the fact that the peak D top that was made back in, I think, uh, January or uh, November or December of last year, um, or oh, what am I talking about, 23, or oh, 2023, yeah, last year, um, the fact that you did that and then plunged pretty sharply but never took out the 111.02 low that was made back in 2022, that's a positive, and that means you could start to make the cup formation uh, in the monthly chart. So step by step, and I'd say I wouldn't put too much money in, but I would just start the position. Just a little nibble. Why? I need evidence of other things. Yeah, new CEO, but wow, I mean, the... There's a, there's a mentality, there's a cult, there's a culture that has been enforced for, it must be at least eight to ten years, that said Boeing's starting to slip and have shoddy workmen. That's what it seems like, shoddy attitude and workmanship. That has to change. Price can change that, but I want to see follow through to the upside. So, Nibble, I'll go into it a little bit more later in the week. Let's see where Boeing can close on Friday for the weekly chart. But personally, I would stay away. I wouldn't actually nibble at all. But uh, if you're asking the question, I'm saying you can just stop. At a five-point stop. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. 
an amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, so the US Global Jets ETF has gone to a higher high. So let me talk about the Sham Wave uh, uh, pattern. So in the Sham Wave we have, uh, let me get to it right now, there it is, right there. So I look at three core directional patterns. One is straight up and straight down. The other is a cup formation. The other is an arch formation. You can mix one and two or one and three. So one and three would be this red dreaded H pattern where you come down sharp, you rally, you don't go to the top, but you fail at a peak A or B and you take out that left side low, you can have a one to one of the arch to the downside. Very negative. The other is the exact opposite. It's the reverse Y. Green, it's number one and two. Straight line up, stall, come back, make a cup formation, take out that left side uh, high. And if you make a, a really good closing pattern, I usually say two out of three bars above the left side, high, you can go one to one to the upside. Well, look what happened. There's your reverse Y and you went sharply higher. Here again, a little reverse Y and it's rallying. But that wasn't the point I wanted to make. The point I wanted to make is, in this particular pattern, it did the H, the H, the dreaded H. And what's fat, it took me a long time, a lot of money, a long time to learn this pattern. You come down sharply, you make the dreaded H. You can either take it out or not take it out. But if it quickly, within two bars preferably, but it could be three, it takes out the top part of the candle and the, the lower part hasn't been substantially taken out, if it rallies and it closes two out of three bars above the arch high, that is really positive because it can give you the dreaded H arch formation that suddenly becomes a very powerful cup formation and goes much higher. Well, this is the second month that it's closed. Uh, the, we had one month closing above the high that was made in the Jets. This is the U.S. Global Jets ETF, which is the July of 2023 at 2250. 2250, and this is the second month that is above it. <laughs> second month, we're, in, we're a couple of days into March, into November, so we really can't talk about it as if the month is closed. But so far, this is really positive because it's suggesting that the next high that we take out. We've already tested this high of 21, uh, 23.71. No, we haven't quite. That'll be 23.71 will be the level to monitor, and then it can go to 25. But that wasn't the point I wanted to make. I wanted to make the point that this is only a leg B in the weekly chart. That's really bullish. Aha. So now we can go back to Boeing and say, wait a minute, if the U.S. global jets ETF, in other words, all the American airlines, 
are doing so well, surely that's not going to going to translate into buying new cra- aircraft. I think it will. So I'm thinking that Boeing, that's the reason why I say I want to see Boeing trading in the 166 because that's going to tell me, especially with the weekly, I don't know what's going to happen in the next week with the market, etc. with the election, uh, all I can say so far, the market is saying, ho-hum, I'm just continuing what I was doing before. But, oh, I didn't mean to go there, I meant to go here. <clears throat> so that that's the reason why I've been looking at the uh, Boeing and just saying, well, are they all going to be buying a Euro, or what is it, what's that, Aero? Oh, why have I forgotten the name? The the French or the European air, air company, Aerobus. Um, yeah, I don't know. But I'm looking at this to say that's why I would start the position. Uh, I would like to wait myself just another couple of days before I'm looking at it. But because you've done your homework and you seem to be looking for it, I'd say you can just start a position right. In fact, the more I think about it, the more I'm inclined to say, you know, the risk is uh, five points. It's just it's a couple of percentage on a small, just a small position. I'd say, yeah. Put your foot in the door. I, I now I'm now I feel a little bit better about that. I might regret it, but it, it, that's the risk you take. A couple of percentage risk, and it could be a very nice gain in the long run, long run. And today, Jets is up fifty cents at twenty three thirty four. So this is very good. So that's the ETF J E T S, and the weekly chart is in leg B. It could be making a new peak a leg leg B. It'll make a peak B if it doesn't go above. Uh, 23, um, 2339, is that 39? Yeah, 2339, it's five, six cents away. So I'm going to say it's probably going to make a leg E, a leg B this week and continue higher. Even if it pulls back, it should go to a C and a D based on the Chapel Wave methodology. All right, did that. Next question came in. Where did I go? Where did I go? Where did I go? Um, Oh, uh, just can I look at Tesla? Yep, Tesla is trading up uh, 8.96 at 251.80. Had a really nice pullback from around number 270 open and a high most recent high of 273. Yeah, 273.54. Uh, went all the way down to two under 240. And now it's back to 251.78. Looking quite nice here. Um, it is a leg D in the weekly chart. We'll see if it makes a peak D. 271 was the last high back in, I think, in July at peak C and pulls back sharply in the weekly. Then it went peak under it. You had a peak A, gray A, gray B, and then a, a gray C. And as soon as it took out the C, you remember, in the, this is overlapping. Oh, I even typed it in. I forgot. Oh, look at that. Right there. I forgot to look at it. Chap wave, overlapping wave to D. All right. Tap, I, I typed it in. Uh, I think after that peak C pullback. And there it is. What happens is if it takes out by one penny this peak, peak gray peak C, it becomes a blue leg D over 264.86, 264.87. And then invariably an overlapping wave takes out the previous peak C at the 271 round number high that was made back in July. And we've got a combined D. And then you've got to be careful because it usually pulls back. That's exactly what it did in the Chapman Wave methodology. Plus, look, the big rectangle, the large, I have a webinars on this. If you if you sign up for my newsletter, you get these webinars. I have a whole thing called the, the narrow rectangle and the large rectangle. The large rectangle says if you make a sharp pullback, like a single leg A, and then you go peak A, pull back, higher, low, and then a higher high, and then you go all the way to a C, invariably you should go just under, right on or just above the previous high. Then you've got to be careful because if you take out the halfway marker, that's a problem. So 271, what did I say? It went to 273 something, 54. And then today's low is 246.21. That's quite a bit of a pullback, all right, in this weekly chart. And it's holding the nine period moving average, and the nine is over the 14. Tesla's still looking pretty good. Did have a pretty sharp pullback, one of the sharper pullbacks it had since the October slide. Okay, next thing I'm looking at here is okay, Apple. Apple had a very sharp pullback from the 237.49 last time. I have a whole thing about this. I've done webinars on it, but I, I, I was thinking, is this time to do it? I don't know if I want to do it. 237.23 was the high in Apple back in June. Pulls back very sharply to the two, I mean, uh, really sharply to the 190s. Then it raised all the way to where? 
237.59, uh, 49. I mean, 26 cents higher after months, right? And then what happens? It starts to pull back. There's your little double top, big C, big D in the week, in the monthly chart. Apple is just having a high level consolidation. Let's go to Amazon as the break is about to come. Amazon trading right now up $1.54, $197.33 at a peak E uh, the other day. Did. I think it just missed a double top all time high. I'll do the work in the break and I'll be right back. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So I had a question uh, in the uh, den about CLN. I don't know whether it's uh, uh, Colgate, uh, Palmolive, or uh, crude oil. So Colgate Palmolive did make a peak A in the monthly chart uh, and made a peak. I had this all notated and then I had to shut down by accident uh, the other day. And I think I lost some of my monthly chart, my charts. So it takes a second to read you. But this is at just under 110 to pull back. So Colgate is looking very poor. The nine period moving average is still weak in the daily. Um, it's trying to rally here, 94. I think if it closes above 97 in the next week and a half, that'll be good. But I just think it's stuck. If you're looking at crude oil, that's a little different. Crude oil is rallying. Um, and now, if you think of this as one candle going to a higher high, that's an overlapping. That is a, a very positive 
um, move. So crude oil says that it should try to get into the Tampa Wave inside track repellent zone in the 75s, but that's strong resistance. So I hope that helps you. Yeah, oil. Okay, so I'm looking at this short term. I think it's acting very nicely, but how it handles the Tampa Wave Roman candle right there is going to be important, and that corresponds on the 14th with a high of 74 50, that corresponds exactly to where you're getting to the resistance. Is this the move that breaks out? All I can say is that in November, if crude oil goes to 79, that is a breakout, and that's going to be really important. If it just keeps hanging out here and just keeps stalling, it can't get through this Chevy Wave inside track repellent zone. That's another thing. So we've got the end of the, re, the the we've we've got the end of the show coming up. So I'm just going to say the Dow is up 289. The S&P is up 43. This is action that I would have anticipated if. There was just a normal market here and that we were about to, to move much higher. All I can say is that how the market responds going into Friday is going to be so important on a weekly basis because if the Dow is able to get to the 43,000s, that's really good action. If it breaks down and starts to close under 41,500, that's not good. And that kind of applies to the others as well. So we go one step at a time. So far, we're looking positively at the 